So we use this single router to understand how the modes differ one from another. We saw user mode, privilege mode, global configuration mode, specific interface mode where we assigned IP address. There we learned that the interfaces are by default down for security reason. We say no shutdown to bring it up so that the ports will turn green from red. Literally the ports will be red even in the, in the real device. When we say no shutdown, we bring the interface up, meaning the line protocols the protocols that are supposed to work on that line, on that port, will start working. Only then, the connected devices can interact. So no shutdown is one of the commands that we should not forget to give on the routers. for communication. Sometime we provide IP address on the interface. We may enable some routing protocols in future, but we'll forget to give that no shout because of that. The communication won't happen. So on Cisco router, the routers are running, the, the ports are down for security so you put no shutdown to allow the ports to function you got a control over each port that is good and then we saw console mode where we set some password so that if someone tries to access the console like this, he'll be asked for the password. So he is asking for the password. So I think the password that I said is one, two, three. Yeah. So after doing a lot of work, we, we, should, uh, we saved it. And we also have given the password so that no one will be logging in without we knowing it unless i give the password no one can enter into this router this is where we stopped now we went here line console zeroth port there's only one console port and that port is identified with the number zero. So we need to go inside and say password. I'm changing the password. Earlier it was one, two, three. Now I'm saying ABC. Login. We have to type this command. If we don't then uh, the password will not be asked the keyword login is very important we have to say during the login time this password need to be asked the user should be checked for the credential before allowing him inside that's the meaning login has to be typed Now let me save this first. Copy, running configuration to startup configuration. Exit. I try to log in again, you see, it's asking for the password. This time if I give one, two, three, it won't allow me. Because we, we gave ABC recently. So the password one, two, three will be overwritten by ABC. ABC, let me type. I'm inside. 
Actually, I typed the password here. I told you uh, neither asterisk nor dot for your characters that you type one will appear, it won't come. That's for security. If like three dots come, someone may get my password easy. If, if when I type three characters, if three dot comes, they may now somehow figure out the password. There are a lot of uh, attacking tools. If you tell that attacking tool, show me all the password that has got only three characters. It'll show you ABC, one, two, three, and many more. To prevent that, Cisco don't show neither dot, 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 or asterisk. I told you in in some bank website, when we type password, we can see dots or asterisk. I think even in Windows, when you try logging in, it shows dots for each character that you type. Cisco don't do that. Okay, so now we have given only password, no username. <coughs> Show user, if you see, it says there is someone online console, but no user. And that someone is me. But if, if someone is doing auditing, if someone wants to know who has logged in, they will not know who has logged in. Someone has logged in. There is no username for the one who is logged in. So it is, it is recommended to use the authentication with username, not just the password. For that, the global configuration mode. See, earlier we said password under the line console mode. Let me show you. See, we, we assigned the password directly under the line console. But this time, I'm going to create a database. And I'll ask line console to refer the database when someone logs in. First, let us create the database. Username, anything that you like to give. China. Password, India. Username, Korea. Password KL Username Swiss Password Zurich. So I have created three users and three passwords. But I did not say line console to use this. I did not say. As a result, see, it still asks only the password. Let me see. So how to make the login with both username and password? You need to go inside the line console again, line console zero. This time you don't need to say password. Actually, we have given a password ABC it will not be given importance if you type this command login local. This means refer the local database. 
when someone logs in, refer the local database. So the password that we, we, we typed earlier, ABC, will not be referred because we are saying log in the local database. Enter. Let me save this and then verify it. You see, this time it is asking username. I'm saying, look here. Password, Kuala Lumpur. Then I'm inside. Let's go and verify. Show user. You see, you can see someone called Korea has logged in. So, we learned the difference between having just the password and username with the password. Username with the password is always good. Secondly, what if someone wants to log in from the remote? I told you using console, we do the initial configuration. What is initial configuration? Uh, maybe host name, setting banner, and giving IP address, connection. As we saw earlier in, a, in, the, in the previous class, like um, two days back, we do only initial configuration using console most of the time. So you can do complete configuration using console port, the blue color port. But everyone don't do that. The reason is usually the device will be in a room where it is freezing. So if you are connecting through a console port, you cannot you cannot con you cannot co contact this device from a very far distance because the console cables are not too lengthy. As per the standard, they cannot be manufactured more than two meters. So you cannot take the console connection to very far distance. You need to go near the device in order to interact. But if you want to configure this device from outside the data center, outside the server room, the server rooms are always noisy. When I say server room, that's the room where the routers are kept. I said some people call the data center, server room. Why I don't know they don't call network room, <laughs> router room. Anyway, they usually call data center or server room. Now that room is always freezing. Another thing, it is too noisy always. Thirdly, the cables, the physically connected cables, will get disturbed if you keep often touching those devices, which may cause a downtime in production. To avoid that, we assign the basic configurations like IP addresses and enable Telnet on the router. Telnet is one of the service which will allow you to remotely log in to the device. Like Telnet, we have SSH. The difference is when I do SSH, the passwords that I am going to type from the remote will be encrypted and sent over the network. As a result, no one can see what password I send. Whereas in the telnet, the passwords are sent over the wire to the remote device without encryption. 
So a small boy in the network, a small techie person can easily see what the password I'm using. And he will use the it's a login password, password, sir. Yes. And he can use the same password to log in when, when I'm not present in the office. So to avoid someone sniffing my packet to know the password, I'll use SSH so that he can sniff, but he cannot get anything useful out of it. Sniffing is legal. It is, it is not illegal, it is legal. Sniffing is legal in network. You can see what others are doing in network. But when you try to see, it won't, it won't, it won't be useful for you because you won't get what you want to see. <clears throat> it's like, you know, people put a window with a reflection glass. IPsec is like, sorry, SSH, uh, SSH is like that. People can see the packet, but they cannot get anything inside it. So when you have a reflection window, you get the light from outside to inside. You can see outside, but outsiders can't see inside. <clears throat> so telnet is like a window with a clean clear glass someone can easily see the password inside but as a such age, the passwords are not revealed instead there will be some hash value in some numbers and alphabets and symbols, which doesn't make any sense. No one can figure out the password with that hash value, not possible. Only the correct receiver will be able to decrypt the password. So, so the receiver and also we we do any protocol or for decryption or how it works. So, receiver is who in this place? Who is the receiver in this topology? Answer me, please. Who is the receiver of my SSH request? From where? From the P the PC? No, he's not a receiver. From there only I'm doing SSH. What is SSH? Or what is Telnet? We take the remote device local. Meaning okay. <clears throat> this is the SSH client. Or if you're doing Telnet, this is the Telnet client. From here I want to see this router. So this is a server. Now, what is your question? Can you please repeat? So from the client and we do any protocol, or okay. how does the decryption take place? Okay, um, you change the question now. Anyhow, initially you said, uh, do we need to do anything on the, you didn't use the word client instead, you used the word, uh, the uh, destination or target or something. Yeah, else. the destination, I mean. Yeah. Now, the destination is this. Anyhow, you're going to configure SSH here. You're going to enable the encryption keys and everything here. Whereas in this, you no need to do. Why you need to do? When you try to do SSH to this, this PC <coughs> will be given a public key from this guy 
It's a long story. I'm making it short because this is not the right time to teach this topic, but I'm answering your question. When this one, do SSH to the router. Router says, oh, okay. You want to do SSH? Fine, fine, fine. See, here is my public key. Use this key, encrypt your password and send it to me. And I will take care of it. So a router gives a key. And the PC, his password that the PC wants to give means the password you will type actually. As a user, you will type. So the PC immediately takes your password and takes the key that you have given, mix it so nicely, like chapati mouth with sugar. Sorry, with salt. Can you see the salt there? Only chapati dough, you see. No sugar. And send that over the wire. And receiver knows this is not simple chapati mouth. There is something inside, I need to take it out. So, what he does is he mix it with water. And then he has got some extraction idea. He only gave the chapati dough to the sender. He knows how to take the chapati dough so that he will see only the salt there, the password. No one in the middle knows what has been mixed with what. So they don't know the extraction method. Only the server knows what we gave and what and how we should take it out so that we can see what the user has given. So user is putting a password along with this public key, chapati dao, chapati mao, and he sends over the wire. The server is already configured with the password, which the user is client is mixing with the chapati mao. Now user generates one hash value with the same chapati mao and the password of his own locally. When this mixer and that mixture matches, he no need to even decrypt. He knows, okay, he has used the right password. Well, encrypting with the public key that I gave. So the router, what it does is, it takes his own real password and the public key that he gave to the client, same copy he also has got, copy, no? So the server generates a hash value. The PC is also sending the hash value. When both the hash value matches, router is very happy. Okay, my dear friend, I understood you are genial. Okay, let me give you the remote session. But the middle guys, if someone sniff, they can't see the password. Why? Because the password is not sent in first place. It is the hash value that is sent. Did you get the answer? Yes. Okay. Now, because of this only some people smile when they sit with the interviewer. Most of my students have given this feedback. That interview was not like interview. Whenever he asks one question, I smile. Because I recall the story that you told. And based on the story, I answered him. And they gave me the job. So you also tell Chapati Mao there, he won't understand Mao, Chapati Dao you put, can you say, to the sure. Okay, now we were focusing on remote logging. Now we are not going to see SSH, first we have to see Telnet. 
instead of we can configuring sitting inside the freezing room you can sit anywhere in the building outside that freezing room and tell it to one of this port these two ports have got ip address console ports no ip address console ports no need an ip address whereas the this ethernet ports need an ip address we have already assigned these ip address now if you go here and try telnetting nothing will come see telnet 10.0.0.1 it says uh, i can reach see 10.0.0.1 it says it is open means i can reach see it's reaching no? and i ping it it's ping it so when i say telnet also it says uh, this address is open means I'm, I'm able to talk with the destination port number 23. But 10.0.0.1, who is my foreign host, he is closing the connection, which means he says you are not allowed to come in. He receives the packet, that's why it says open. He receives my packet. Who? 10.0.0.1, that is the router. Even if I say 20.0.0.1, it's the same thing. Telnet 20.0.0.1. This is also another address in the same router. And same output. Connection closed by the foreign host. From here, I can telnet to this address or any, any of the router address. As long as you are able to ping here. See, I can even ping 20. So there is reachability. But when I do a search, it says connection closed by the foreign host, meaning the foreign host received my packet, but the foreign host is not ready to provide the service because it is not configured to reveal itself to the remote device. For that, what I have to do is I need to go to the foreign host, which is the server here, the router. Username is Korea or China. In password is India. And then we have to Enable the telnet. How? How to enable telnet? Line VTY. VTY is nothing but virtual terminal emulation. VTY. Means it's a virtual connection. Remotely you are logging in. No, it's not physical. And then you need to give a number like 0 or 0 to 2 or 0 to 1 or 0 to 4 is the um, acceptable one. 0 to 4. What does that mean? Simultaneously, parallelly, at the same time, five people can log in. Meaning it will create virtual port 0. Virtual port 1, virtual port 2, 3, 4. Five virtual ports maximum I'm allowing to create so that via five virtual ports, five parallel telnets are allowed. Meaning, currently how many users we have created? Three users. So I can have three different computers I can have three different computers. I have two computers now. Three, or if you have five, five percent, up to five computers can parallelly log into this one. Parallelly, they can log in. And they can also put configuration. So they can play a game. This guy will configure, this guy will delete. <laughs> that type of game also they can play. Actually, to avoid that type of game, uh, we don't uh, give four and all. 
if I have only two employees in my organization, why should I allow four? And the two employees are not coming at the same time. One comes in the morning, the other comes in the evening. So I'll simply say zero only. So only one connection is permitted. The second person cannot log in because one session, that zeroth session is already in use. Now, I need to say transport input telnet. What does it mean? I am enabling only telnet service on this virtual terminal emulation or this line VTY0. And I have to say login local. Like you said for console port, this is for line VTY. Now if you go back here and tell it 20001. See, it is asking the password. Earlier it was not asking. Earlier it was saying close by the foreign host. And now it's asking the password. I can give any password. Korea. And then um, Kuala Lumpur. I'm inside. Look at this. Inside the PC, I see the router. See? So, we are able to log in remotely from anywhere into this router. As long as the reachability is there. You no need to now go inside the room where this router is kept you can you can sit anywhere outside through the ethernet wire you can communicate now because this is already telneted because this computer is already telneted if you try telneting from another computer it won't allow you because only one connection we have allowed so telnet 10001 it says sorry I'm, I'm not i'm not welcomed but if i close that session i'm going to close this exit what is this exit i close this session now you go to the other one And now you see it's asking me the username. So only one person at a time from the outside can log in. And this time I'm going to say the username as Swiss password. Sorry, I'm inside. Now let us go and check. See, you are now sitting in the console. Let's assume you, have, you are sitting in the console. You want to see who has logged in. <coughs> Show user. See, you are, there is one engineer, let's say. He's in the console. He wants to know who has teleneted from the outside. He types show user. He can see you are logged in as China on the console. But from line VTY, zero. Someone called Swiss from this IP address logged in. Now let me exit from there. And I'll see, I exit from 20002. Now I'm going to 10010 and I'm telling again. Username is China, India. Now let's go and check the user. Earlier it was showing Swiss as the VTY user, but now it's China VTY user and the IP address is 10.0.0.10. See, I can easily find out from which IP address and which engineer has logged in. The engineer name is China here and Swiss. 
So it says logged up. Now, if you want both to parallelly log in, you have to say line VTY is zero, not interface. Line VTY is zero one, zero put some space and one, login, local transport input till net. Just one more question, sir. Yep. Is login local as our database? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Otherwise, you know, I cannot use the username and password, no? Okay. So we manually created that local, right? Yeah. It's not default. Uh, you don't remember that? China is yeah. one username. So She's... that database is named as local. Yeah, those, those, that is what called as okay. local database. Okay. Now, I'm allowed to tell it from two different devices, zero to device and first device. You see here also, if I try now, it will allow me. And then I give China as the username. Here also you can give the same username, but I want to try uh, Swiss. Password is so. Now let's go and verify from this router. Show users. You see, from two different locations, two different IP address, one engineer called China has logged in. He's the one who logged in first, is the zeroth connection. The first connection is given to the second engineer called Swiss, who is sitting in this computer, and I can see how long he is logged in. I can see very well how long they are logged in. Yep. So it is always good to use username and password to know who has done this. Based on the username, you will know who has done this. Otherwise, no accountability. Someone logs in with a password only and someone deletes it and you will say someone has deleted. You will not be able to say who deleted it. But when I have a username, I have a proof that it is it is only the Swiss who deleted it. Not the China. China is an innocent. Only media portraits. Don't believe China is innocent. It's only Swiss. You can very clearly say that. With this proof. Show users. Okay. Now we have configured a uh, hotel. SSH is not for today. Because there are a few, lot of things that I need to do. Let me save the configuration. Now what else? Today we have learned one thing, how to do from remote, which is telnet alone. <clears throat> In the next class, We'll do a search.